Today we're going to be covering software design aspect of functional decomposition. Um, the main difference that we really need to focus on here is software versus hardware. You've already seen hardware and now we're going to really focus in on what we need to do with software. The major difference here is with hardware you defined what signals went between blocks, but in software we're going to define what functions. There are still signals involved, but internally there are only functions. It's a very object-oriented approach where each block has a set of public function interfaces, which we'll discuss more in a moment. These functional interfaces are sort of like the public functions of a class in Java, if you're used to Java, or the subroutines that you share from a header file. Um, we're going to have a software block diagram, which is mainly going to be separated from the hardware block diagram. The hardware block diagram is going to have maybe a pick block or some sort of software block involved in it with hardware connections going into it, but it's not going to expand on it right there. Instead, you're going to create a second block diagram to go along with the hardware block diagram that expands purely on what software you have. Um, the main reason for this is that hardware normally forces your software solutions. Software is very flexible, while hardware can very often not be. If hardware changes, it's normally a pretty big redesign and it costs money. Software, you can normally just reprogram your device. This is an example of a simple system. You notice the inputs and outputs aren't really drawn here. You could see that this would obviously be some sort of IR connection. Um, and many other connections would go into the system, but really what we're focused on is the pick block. The pick block is really the core of this, and it's what controls everything else. You see we've defined the connections going into it. The IR detector is going to send a serial data at 2K baud. The audio control is controlled through some sort of UART. How this UART is controlled is not really of our concern. SPI is going to be controlling the CAN bus interface, and you see the LED display has some sort of PW empowering it or controlling it, and an analog feedback it's passing us. Now if we zoom in, you notice immediately that we've gotten a lot bigger on the pick block, and the microchip is still labeled down here, but we have the serial connection defined up top, the UART still on the side, and you can continue to go around and notice that we have the same connections defined everywhere. The reason for this is, is because the hardware system is pretty much driving what our solution space is. In our solution space, we've decided that we want to break uh, the system up into decoupled blocks also. We have an LED controller that's clearly going to handle all of the I.O. involving the LED side, an IR decode controller, which is clearly communicating to other devices, and a number of other blocks involved here. The really important thing to note here is you notice the LED controller is controlled through IR decode through a function called LED power. This arrow means that IR decode calls the function and LED controller has the function. This is what we're going to call a public function interface. This is a function that controls the function of LED controller, and LED controller is completely in charge of how it controls its interfaces. The interfaces can change, anything can happen, and it is still up, LED power is still the only way you call LED controller. You could easily call other sub-functions, but that would probably break the system on the programmer and not make your team very happy with you. This is an example of a public function list. You notice the first thing, block name. We define what block this is associated with. I've only done this for one of the functions because I think that gives you the main point. Um, the LED controller block has a function name LED power. LED power is going to update LED power to match parameter new power. And we expand on a little more. Any real function that you do will probably have a lot greater description than this. This is really describing what this function is for. You notice it returns nothing, meaning that you don't expect to get any information back from this block. You just have to trust that it does what it's supposed to. And its parameters are new power. So you're going to tell it what power you want. And it's pretty much explaining that it's going to take care of what you're requesting. What happens if something changes? It's not really your concern, but we're going to go through a quick example. So if LED controller were to have a sudden change in its interface and we were to change over to an SPI connection instead of the other connections, clearly that would change the inner workings of LED controller pretty greatly. But you notice IR decode still only sees LED power. That's because LED power is decoupling IR decode from LED controller. This is a really clear example of that. LED controller is sending SPI data, controlling a microchip instead of controlling a analog circuit anymore, maybe. Who knows? But when you call LED power and say that you want a power of 255, LED controller is going to make sure that that happens. Just to go back and sum it up real quick, you notice that we have our external interfaces defined, which should map 
perfectly to any hardware block diagram associated with this. You'll notice that the blocks are separated by function names. You can see that IR decode can request a sound from the audio interface controller. You notice that Canvas communication controller can update the audio interface controller and our receiver ID. And you notice the IR decoder can change the LED lights. This really lets you know just from reading the function names sort of how the system works. But if it really came down to knowing needing to change something, maybe IR decode needed to change to be a different system, you would just look up the public function interfaces for LED power and request sound to know how to use them with a different block. And you'd look up update receiver ID to make sure that you could update it for however you make sure your block still handles its public function interface properly. This pretty much sums up everything you need to know about software block diagrams.